With so much controversy going on recently about red eyeshadows, I wanted to do a super quick video for you guys. It's all educational based because that's what I love. I love makeup education and that's actually where I want to go with my channel. There's a couple different directions, but a lot of it I want to talk about behind the scenes of makeup, how it's made, what's in the ingredients, what does it take to get a makeup company started, all of that. So this is kind of one of many videos that I plan on doing, and I figured this is a great one to start with because there was so much commotion and talk about it, and it really hasn't been talked about a lot. And so the topic of today's video is behind the pigments, why red eyeshadows stain your skin. So as you guys can see, I have props today. I have my little teacher stand because if for those of you who are new to my channel, I used to be a teacher for many years. I was a music teacher and then um, decided to do YouTube on the side and now it's my full-time career. Now I own a cosmetic brand. And in the last 10 years of me being on YouTube, I've worked with chemists one-on-one -on -one, and I just don't put my name on anything um, that's private labeled. Not that I'm saying that's a bad thing at all. Some companies need to do that. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, you guys. I just want to give those of you new to my channel a little bit of my background so you kind of understand where I'm going with the ingredient piece of it. So I want to talk a little bit about pigments to start. So basically pigments in your makeup are the colorants that give it its vibrant color. Purples, greens, blues, reds, all of that, that's what makes up makeup. So basically pigments can come into two different categories. You like my visuals? <laughs> I'll have better visuals next time. I was a little hurried this time. Um, so we have two categories. There's organic um, pigments and there's synthetic ones. Organic pigments are basically ones that are derived from the earth. You have, I'm gonna pull out my, this is my makeup brush. We're gonna use this as a pointer because this is makeup education. <laughs> So basically we have Carmen is a really common one that's used. You can have spices such as turmeric, beet powder, plant extracts. I actually have beet powder right here to kind of show you guys what this is. So these kind of natural ingredients, if they come from uh, the earth, from plants, from spices, these can be used as organic colorants. Now the reason why a lot of these aren't, except for Carmine, um, used a lot is because they actually put off a smell. Like I'm sitting here right now with this beet powder. Yeah, it smells pretty strong. It smells very beady. <laughs> I don't know if I would wear this on my eyes. It might bother me a little bit. And sometimes with these organic um, ingredients, they may not be as vibrant as synthetic ones. So that's why it's kind of, you can use either one, but out of all of these right here that I have listed, the one that's used the most is actually Carmine. So what Carmine is, is basically crushed bugs. It's the Co cochineal, cochineal bug. I think that's how we say it. <laughs> I did look this up last night of how to pronounce it. I've seen it many times. Cochineal bug. It's basically a bug that lives on cactus in uh, Mexico, Central America. That's where it lives. So basically when it's dried and then it's crushed, it puts off a really strong red pigment and it tends to be kind of an orangish red, whereas some of the synthetic reds we're gonna talk about are more of a blue base red. Anyways, I know it sounds really gross, you guys, putting dead bugs on your skin. The reason why this is an ingredient, um, even though it's not considered vegan because it is bugs, it is FDA approved. The US does allow Carmine, it has for many, many years, but it is allowed in um, cosmetics is because of that color, it doesn't tend to irritate the skin. Um, it is considered natural, even though it is from a bug, and it's one of the organic side of things. We'll get into that more in a second. So this is kind of the list of organic pigments. Now the other pigments that we have are synthetic pigments. These come in the categories of ultramarines, which are like your blues, your violets, your pinks. That's what those colors generally are for. Your iron oxides are your earthy colors, your yellows, your oranges, your browns. And then manganese is usually like um, a violet or a deep plum color. So if you have a mauve eyeshadow, it may have this ingredient in it. And then the other one is titanium dioxide. And that's a really common one. When I was at um, one of my labs a couple weeks ago, actually, I was talking with a chemist like, oh, because I'm rebranding eyeshadows. I'm like, I need this a little bit lighter. And so to get that, they use titanium dioxide and it's technically white in color. And that's what they can use to make the shadows a lot lighter or give it its white color. So these are some of the synthetic uh, pigment categories. Really quick, fun fact for you guys, since we're talking about carmine and crushed bugs and all that, and yes, it has been in food. So did you know, this is my favorite candy, Skittles. 
<laughs> I have a whole story and this was my favorite candy as a kid, it was delicious. Up until 2009, Carmine was used to be the colorant in uh, this food. And I think what happened in 2009 is a lot more people were going vegan and vegetarian. So in order to make it vegan and vegetarian, they replaced the Carmine with an ingredient called Red 40, which we'll talk about in a second. And that's, Red 40 is part of FDNC colors. Actually, let's talk about it now. <laughs> So FD and C colors is part of a synthetic pigment and you'll see this a lot in red eyeshadows and this is the one that generally all this uproar with staining and all of that is gonna come from a synthetic color usually. So FD and C is if you look on the back of your eyeshadow packaging you'll see um, FD and C4 or Red 40 or whatever, this actually stands for the Food, Drug and Cosmetics Act. It was an act that was passed in 1938 that regulated more of what was in your food, your drugs, your cosmetics. And so that was uh, shortened to basically FDNC. So if you see any of the colorants that come under this category, most specifically what we're talking about today is red eyeshadows, you'll see these labels on the back of your eyeshadow. It'll say what colorants you use. These are all the types of synthetic reds that can be in your eyeshadow. You can have a mixture of any of these. So you could have in an eyeshadow a red four and a 17, a 28 and a 30, for example. I'm just throwing numbers out. The one I see a lot that my chemists have worked with is red 40. Basically, if a cosmetic lab, if I am for Makeup Geek and I'm saying, okay, I want my shadow to be vegan and I know it needs a red pigment so I can't use Carmine because Carmine isn't considered vegan. Some people don't like it because again, it is crushed bugs. So we go to the synthetic side of things, Red 40 is generally the replacement for it. The difference between the two is Carmine, um, from what chemists have told me, is that Carmine is more of like a rusty red, like an orangey red. If I want a very pink red, like a very bright blue, Blue based one, Red 40 is gonna give me more of that. The reason that these are used is because they're very intense, they're very bright, and that's what gives you that really high pigment load in an eyeshadow. The only thing with this is the FDA, which um, in the US regulates these colorants, they don't consider these eye safe. I looked on the government site, I looked on there to see like what the reason why, and it's only in the US, a lot of these colorants in the EU allows these ingredients, but the US doesn't. It could be for a couple of reasons, and I can't state exactly why, because again, it doesn't say. It could be because this is known to stain the skin because it is such an intense color, but also it can cause an allergic reaction to some people. And again, it doesn't affect everyone. It can be with some. It can cause some swelling, some hives, some skin irritation. Um, the reason for that, and not to get everyone scary about that, but basically FDNC colors are uh, derived from coal. I can't explain the whole process, but I can do another detailed video later on that, but these come from coal. And because of that, there can be trace amounts of lead and arsenic. Now that is not to cause uproar. The FDA has this approved for in your cosmetics uh, if there's trace amounts. So basically what it's regulated as is 10 parts to a million. So if I have a million pounds of red 40, only 10 pounds out of that million is able to have any trace amounts of lead or arsenic in it in order for it to be considered safe. So I know it sounds scary um, when we talk about lead and asbestos and um, arsenic and all those things that we know are bad for us. It honestly depends on the volume. It's, a, it's very trace amounts. The FDA does approve that and consider that safe. It's when you get into larger amounts. If you have like a whole handful of, you know, arsenic and you're rubbing it all over your face, obviously that's going to be not good for you at all. But it is regulated for having 10 parts to a million just for a heads up on that one. <laughs> so with all that being said about the colorants in there, if you check your eyeshadow and you feel like you have an allergic reaction to it, um, look to see what it is. Does it have Carmine? Does it have one of these FDNC colors? Does it have Red 40 in it? That will kind of tell you, help you narrow down what it is that you may be allergic to because it could be that, it could be another ingredient. Every person is different. If a cosmetic company uses the FDNC colors because in the United States, it's not allowed to be you. Uh, talked about being used on the eye. So I can't market it as an eyeshadow. So what many companies do is they market it as a pigment. So for example, I even have uh, my power pigments that I launch. And the reason why I put them in a separate square pan is because of that, is because of the colorants in there. They're meant to be used. They can be used on the rest of your face. It's just, I can't market them as eyeshadows. It's honestly up to the consumer to decide 
is this going to break me out? Is this going to cause a reaction or not? Because every person is different. So that's why we mark them like that. But here's an example of the red. So let me show you guys. So do you see how bright and vivid that is? That is honestly because of the synthetic pigment. I could try to create this with Carmine and I'll still get a red, but it'll be not as vivid and not as bright. So that's why a lot of cosmetic companies use these synthetics is because you can just get more vibrancy and payoff for the amount of color that's in there. So what I recommend doing is if you have staining from this, because even me, do you see how I have some staining from that? If I try to wipe it off, it's just because the pigment load is so high, it's so intense, and it's such a vivid color. So what I recommend doing is if you feel like you get any red shadow on you, whether it be anywhere on your face, if you feel like you have staining from makeup, all you have to do is use an oil-based makeup remover or oil itself. The one that I really love is the Clinique one. It's the take the day off the purple one. It has oil in it. That's why I had to shake it up is to mix the oil with the other uh, solution in there. But all you have to do is I have it with me is take on, you know, just those little cotton pads and you'll just put some of this on. And if you rub it on, do you see how that came right off? Traditional face wash doesn't usually take it off as well, but if you use some sort of oil, it's gonna break down that pigment and make it easier to wipe off so it won't cause as, as much irritation on your skin. If you don't wanna get an eye makeup remover like this, and there's tons of brands that have oil in it, you can honestly use straight up oil, hemp seed oil, avocado oil, rose uh rose hip oil any of the oils that are lightweight that are okay to use on the face i always recommend doing to break down your makeup so this one is just the uh botanics one you can get this at target love target <laughs> you can use this as well on your skin and just rub it pretend this is my face <laughs> we're just gonna rub it all over the face and then go in and wash with your normal face wash it'll come right off so I hope that gives you guys some more information about um, the red pigment, our lovely beet powder right here. It, it does smell, it smells pretty strong. Actually, I'm gonna try this really quick. Let's try this. Yeah, see, it doesn't stick to the skin very well. <laughs> so yeah, I can see why we're not gonna put this in our cosmetics, but it is a great concept. If you wanna go very natural, very organic, this could be an option for you is beet powder. <laughs> So anyways, I hope that topic is helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below what education you want to see from me because I can do anything as far as like what is in your foundation or how to pick your best foundation color or why do certain makeup things do whatever. I can tell you anything about makeup. So let me know what you want to see. Comment below and don't forget to click on that little bell to be notified when my next video comes out because I'm going to try to do a lot of education videos for you guys with some really cool props in the future. So <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful and take care you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. What? These taste really good. This candy is delicious. How can you not love Skittles? <laughs>